puppy proofing. Ah. Puppy proofing. Puppy proofing. Again, we get back to, you know, we want to teach our dog to not do these things, mm-hmm. right? If, if, like, Waffles picked something up he wasn't supposed to or this or that, I would correct him for it, and he would learn from it, and he would learn not to pick that thing up. Mm-hmm. But let's put some of the tempting things away so I'm not every four seconds needing to get on the dog over something. Yeah. Let's make it a little easier for the dog. Let's put ourselves on the dog's shoes for a minute. <laughs> and if there's all these fun, entertaining things laying around all the time. You're going to do it. I'm probably going to try to do it. Yeah. And yes, we need to teach the dog. We got to correct the dog. But if, if everything is just out all the time, you're going to be correcting the dog all the time for stuff. Yeah. So let's make it a little easier. Set up for success. Obviously, we want to teach our dog what's right and what's wrong over time so that we can keep our house exactly how we want it without needing to worry about putting everything away and live in a strict, minimalist lifestyle. Mm. That being said, there are going to be so many different things that you are working on with your young dog over the course of the first five to six months of their life. Additionally, many of these things can be toxic or dangerous to dogs where it isn't worth the risk. Instead of overwhelming them and yourself with the frustrations of missing something and having your favorite shoe chewed up, putting anything that could be enticing to your puppy away and out of reach. Later on, you could put those things back out one at a time when you have some training and the ability to consistently tell the dog clearly that they aren't allowed to touch it, Mm. right? The toxic thing is really important because here's the thing, right? Let's say... I don't know. Let, let's say I keep my Advil or whatever the fuck, right? Somewhere <laughs> yeah. that the dog can hypothetically get to. And I'm like, no, I like my Advil in that spot. <laughs> I'm just going to teach the dog to not go for it. It's like, uh, is it really worth it if your dog eats the entire bottle of Advil and no. then needs to get their stomach pumped or they die from yeah, it because yeah. you felt like you just desperately needed to keep it right there? Yeah. Or shoes. A lot of people complain that their dog chews up shoes right? Mm -hmm. I've had people that have come in before that have complained about their dog chewing up like a $1,500 pair of shoes or something like that. And I'm just like, I, I get the frustration, but at the same time, yes, we want the dog to avoid that, but is it worth literally a $1,500 pair of shoes getting chewed up? Couldn't you just maybe put those in the closet and just make sure they're not out where the puppy can get them? Right? Let's take a little bit of personal responsibility for some of this kind of stuff. And later on, once the dog has proved that they don't chew up shoes, then if you desperately feel like you need to keep those shoes out, you can, knowing the chances of them going for it are so low then at that point. Yeah. Let's just keep the Gucci's in the... In the Keep closet. the Gucci loafers in the closet. <laughs> Please. <laughs>